you are looking at the world's largest collection of deep sea dirt. Just how many samples are we talking about? Cores themselves are about 18,000. That's Rusty Lottie Bond, the curator of this sediment repository, which is located in the basement of Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory, just north of New York City. The collection includes samples from all over. North Atlantic cores, many lakes, southern ocean cores, many bogs, the Middle East. You get the idea, but how are they collected exactly? We would take a ship out. And we call it a cruise, but it's not a luxury cruise. It's actually on an oceanographic research vessel. Peter Domenichel is a marine geologist at Lamont who's brought back many cores for this collection. We have a device that allows us to take uh, sediment cores from the bottom of the ocean, and we lower this from the ship down through the ocean depths to typically a depth of two or three or four kilometers of water depth. And then that penetrates into the ocean mud, and it takes this long tube of mud from the ocean, and then you pull it back up to the ship. And so that tube will be 30 or 40 feet long. Then the tubes are brought back to this basement. Where they're unpacked and stored. So this particular core is uh, just north of Venezuela. Um, it's actually become quite famous for places to discover abrupt climate change. Where climate now we're getting to why this mud is important. It stores historical climate data, largely in the tiny shells trapped in the sediment. The shells, basically, they're made of the constituents of seawater. They tell us about the chemistry of past oceans. So they're like a little snapshot of what ocean chemistry was like at the time when these things were living. So we can make various geochemical measurements on the shells to tell us about temperature or salinity or the CO2 content of the atmosphere, lots of different things. And the sediments can reveal rainfall. So altogether, ocean sediments can provide a record of climate data that goes back millions of years. We can radiocarbon date the core. And so we have a record of climate, and then we have time. So climate over time is paleoclimate. Domenico studies Africa's paleoclimate. About 10,000 years ago, the Sahara was wet and Domenico uses cores to figure out how fast that change occurred. What we discovered in this core off of Mauritania, which is right in the middle of where the dust is today, that transition happened within about a century or two. So it was really, really fast. So it went from being, you know, not a rainforest, but a fully closed canopy vegetation to the modern day desert within, you know, within a generation or two. In some cores, you can actually see evidence of the climate change with the naked eye. This is the top of the core, and you see it's a brick red color. That red is the dust that blows off the desert and into the sea. But when the Sahara was wet... You'll see that it transitions from this brick red color to like a, a dark green color. Yeah, so that's what the core looks like during what would be a wet period. As you go back in time, the core actually changes color. And understanding this climate shift can help explain the evolution of ancient civilizations. That's what's kind of cool about it, is that you put people within the context of climate. And that's actually, you know, that's sort of the theme that we're all talking about today, is what's our relationship to climate. Lamont started stashing sediments about 60 years ago, and the man behind it was Maurice Ewing. Uh, Ewing was a real adventurer. At the time, few of the cores he collected were actually being used. He did it for the, really, for the future. I mean, there are quotes, someone will use these someday. And he's gone, and we are. How profound. <laughs> For Science Friday, I'm Flora Lichtman.